Ha, gotcha on April Fool's Day. But don't worry, you're gonna be getting rewarded with some of my favorite pro gun statistics. Because today in this video, we're gonna be reviewing some of the absolute top pro gun statistics that will drive your in-laws crazy or whoever it is in your life that says, guns are bad, guns cause violence, we'd be better off without them. This is the video you may wanna think about linking them to. So guys, let's get into it. Myth number one, private ownership of guns is not effective in preventing crime. How often do you hear this? Fact, every year people in the United States use firearms to defend themselves against criminals an estimated 2.5 million times. That's more than 6,500 people per day or once every 13 seconds. Of these instances, 15.7% of the people use firearms defensively went on to state that they almost certainly save their lives in doing so. Now's a good time to add, you will see a lengthy list of studies and attributions in the description box below. Fact number two, if you are attacked, your best bet to escape death or serious bodily injury is to fight back with a gun. It's not to offer no resistance and it's not to fight back without a gun. If you're being attacked or robbed, Again, your best bet to escape serious bodily injuries to fight back with a firearm. According to the data in the Department of Justice National Crime Victimization Survey, the probability of serious injury during an attack is 2.5 times higher for women who do not resist their attacker compared to women who fight back with a firearm. So for slow people who are paying attention, what we're talking about is you are 2.5 times more likely to be seriously injured if you do not resist your attacker compared to if you resist your attacker with a firearm. Women who resist with a gun are also about four times more likely to not be seriously injured compared to women who do fight back but are not armed with a firearm. These statistics are loosely the same. They tell the same story, but it's not quite the same dispersion when it comes to men. Men who do go along with their attackers without offering resistance are 1.4 times more likely to be seriously injured compared to those who offer resistance by way of a firearm. The same correlation emerges when we take a look at what happens when men resist, but without a gun compared to when they resist with a gun. Men who of course resist without a gun are about 1.5 five times more likely to be seriously injured compared to if they just had a gun. So your single best option, statistically speaking, resist with a gun. Fact number three, for every accidental death, suicide or homicide. So if we just lump all three of those together in the United States, there are 13 lives that are saved through the defensive use of firearms. This mostly comes from the Center for Disease Control data. Now, if you want to split hairs, it's actually 13.43 lives saved. But again, if we just look at the raw data for every life that is taken with the assistance of a firearm, there are 13.43 lives saved. The next fact, then President Obama commissioned a study, again, by the Center for Disease Control to examine the issue more closely concerning the defensive use of firearms. While highly accurate information is almost impossible to pin down in any field of sociology, let alone here, the CDC in their 2013 study conducted by the National Academies Institute of Medicine and the National Research Council used studies that cited that there were on average between 500,000 and 3 million defensive gun uses per year in the United States. That's by the way, chapter three, page 15. And while 3 million is argued to be an outlier high number, the outlier low number cited by an entirely different off CDC study came out to 108,000 defensive uses per year. So there's your range between 108,000 to 3 million with 500,000 looking like actually a comparably low and safe number. The next fact, the number of times per year an American uses a firearm to defend a home invasion alone, according to one study, was 498,000 times. The next fact, oof, this one's gonna hurt. The rate of defensive gun use is six times that of criminal gun use. That comes from the Bureau of Justice Statistics. Not the Bureau of Tom's making things up, that's the Bureau of Justice Statistics. Fact, merely brandishing a firearm in self-defense will solve approximately 92%
of attackers. They're going to run away and disengage. Guys, really quickly, thanks for stopping by. All the YouTube things, be sure to click like. It tells us you like videos like this, and consequently, we make more videos like this. And it tells YouTube other people should see videos like this. My ask for today as well is to post down below what your favorite statistic is that you're seeing. What's your favorite statistic? I look forward to reading this after the video is up. Now back to the show. Here's another just myth on the whole. More guns means more crime, right? What you're going to see on screen right now is a very important graph. It shows on the red line that starts high on the left side of your screen and then kind of descends slowly towards the right. That's the rate of firearm ownership in a given population. So you see the countries around the bottom on the x-axis. So the higher the red bar is, so for instance, on the very far left, close to the y-axis, you have the United States that has the most number of firearms per person in the population. In fact, it's the only country in the world with more than one firearm per person. Second place, by the way, honorable mention goes to Switzerland. Switzerland with about 41 firearms per 100 compared to the good old US of A, where last time we had data was 120 firearms per 100 persons. So we have about three firearms almost for every one that the Swiss have. And then of course, as you move down the right side of that graph, you can see that that continuously drops. Now again, this is not just the raw number of firearms in a population. So it's not like if you had a small population country that happened to have, say, 10,000 guns, but for whatever reason is a population of 1,000 people, it's the Vatican City. That would actually be to the left of the United States here because they would have more guns per person than even the United States would have. So we're not talking about raw number of firearms in a population. We're talking about the rate of firearms in a given population. So now these blue bars that you see, they show the rate of firearm homicides in a given population. And again, this is by rate. So it's not just raw homicide number. It shows basically how many homicides happen per 100,000 people. Now, now that you have all the pieces in your chessboard, let's start moving it around. If guns were causing the problem, and they were in the driver's seat for provoking violence, then the blue bars should rise to the level of the red line to demonstrate an evidence-based statistical relationship of more guns equals more crime. We should see a relationship emerge between the number of firearms in a given population and the amount of the related firearm homicides. Instead, of course, what we see here is there's seemingly zero correlation between firearm ownership rate and homicide rate. One piece of evidence for this, of course, is the fact that Switzerland is second in firearms ownership rate by population, but is 68th by homicide rate by firearms. Meanwhile, the top three countries for firearm homicide rate average 6.5 guns per 100 people in the population, which measures out to be about 16 times higher homicide rate than the United States and a whopping 555 times higher homicide rate compared to the Swiss. Further, a few common denominators of the top homicide rate countries in the world are that they all have fewer guns per capita and significantly more gun control than the United States. So folks, statistically speaking, it's definitely not the guns. And even within the United States, we see this emerge. A study from 2017 found that about 60%, that's 60%, of rural homes own a firearm compared to 40% of suburban, 28% of urban. Now, if guns were the problem, then downtown major cities should be, at least by rate, far safer than the country or rural areas, right? After all, by capita, there's more than twice as many firearms in the country than in major downtown areas. Yet, Shockingly, perhaps to some, according to another 2017 FBI study, you are basically somewhere between, depending upon the city and which statistic you want to look at, 250% to over 400% more likely to be murdered in a major city compared to the country or the suburbs. Almost by coincidence, the homicide numbers basically map, by the way, similarly to instances of rape, robberies, assaults, burglaries. And I spent a lot of time staring at charts and tables. And what I'm here to tell you, hopefully this isn't rocket science and this isn't blowing you away, but apparently bad things happen where bad things happen. So if you don't want bad things to happen, maybe worry about that and not whether or not somebody who's law-abiding is concealed carrying a firearm. Here's another myth. We were just talking about law-abiding people carrying firearms, but what about more people carrying guns equals more crime, right? Because after all, 
look, Switzerland, you can own guns and so forth, but they're not often carrying them about as we hear in the United States. Maybe that's the problem, even though you're going to ignore the rest of that chart that we just had above, right? Well, let's take a look at some facts. Fact. After passing their concealed carry law, Florida's homicide rate fell from 36% above the national average to 4% below. Fact. In Texas, homicide rates fell 50% faster than the national average in the year after their concealed carry law was passed. And similarly, rapes fell 93% faster in their first year after the enactment of concealed carry and 500% faster in the second year. Assaults also fell 250% faster in the second year as well. Fact, and here's a good one. Crime is significantly higher in states without right to carry laws. This study was obviously done when this was a thing. So crimes are statistically higher in states without right to carry laws. And just for some follow-up information on this study, this study actually involved a county-level crime statistics from all 3,054 counties in the United States between 1977 to 1992. And during this time, 10 states adopted right to carry laws. It is estimated, according to that study, that if all states had adopted right to carry laws, then in 1992, the U.S. would have avoided 1,400 murders, 4,200 rapes, 12,000 robberies, 60,000 aggravated assaults, and saved over five billion with a B dollars in victim expenses. Gun control costs money as well as lives. Fact, states that disallow concealed carry have violent crime rates that are 11% higher than the national average. That's according to the FBI, the Uniform Crime Reports from 2004, which notably did exclude Hawaii and Rhode Island, which according to the authors, small populations and geographic isolation for both create other determinants to violent crime. Fact, gun homicides were 10% higher in states with restrictive concealed carry laws, according to a study that spanned 1980 to 2009. Fact, maybe it's no surprise that in a survey of 15,000 police officers, 91%, 91% said concealed carry should be permitted without question and without further restrictions. By the way, without question, without further restrictions, that's a quote from the study. Fact, in 80% of gun defenses, the defender used a concealed handgun. A quarter of gun defenses occurred in places away from the defender's home. Interesting little tidbit. Fact, 77% of all violent crime occurs in public places. Now, this makes concealed carry laws morally necessary for almost all defense needs. But of course, due to firearm carry laws, restrictions, sensitive place laws, and all that other kind of stuff, only 26.8% of defensive gun uses occurred away from the home. So who are these people carrying guns? There's of course a myth that people who carry guns are some sort of bloodthirsty group and all that kind of stuff. Fact, people with concealed carry licenses are 5.7 times less likely to be arrested for violent offenses compared to the general public. 13.5 times less likely to be arrested for nonviolent offenses than the general public. Fact, in Florida, a state that has allowed concealed carry since 1987, you're actually twice as likely to be attacked by an alligator by a person with a concealed carry permit. Fact, in Texas, citizens with concealed carry licenses are 14 times less likely to commit a crime. They're also five times less likely to commit a violent crime. So you see those Texas statistics neatly map with the, what the other studies have seen elsewhere around the country. But I know what you're saying, Tom, the United States, it's the home of mass shootings. You're not talking about mass shootings. Fact. A study with significantly broader, multilingual, and definition-precise data sets concluded that, quote, while the U.S. had about 4.6% of the world's population, it had just 2.88% of the mass public shootings. The U.S. ranks 58th in attack rate and 62nd in overall murder rate, end quote. For my friends in Canada, I'll repeat that, 58th in attack rate and 62nd in overall murder rate. Fact, on a per population basis, according to another study, the United States ranks fourth behind three European countries or eighth when a broader set of non-conflict countries are examined. Fact, 
One tracking database by the Crime Prevention Research Center in 2023 said that 41.3% of active shooter events were terminated by armed citizens. Outside of gun-free zones, that rate climbs to 63.5%. Hopefully you enjoyed some of my favorite statistics. Now, truth be told, I actually have documents with hundreds of pages, not dozens of pages, hundreds of pages going into facts and statistics like this. So if you want to see a part two or three or four or 10 or 20, let me know down in the comment field below. I want you to post up in the comment field, what was your favorite statistic or favorite few statistics that you thought were interesting or thought provoking or something you maybe haven't heard before. I'm curious to see what people think. And of course, now to our ever popular quote of the day. This one comes from one of my favorite authors, Aldous Huxley, author of Brave New World, which I recently just reread. Quote, facts do not cease to exist because they are ignored, end quote. No, they do not, Aldous. No, they do not. Thanks for sticking around. Don't forget to hit like if you've not already done so. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to check out some of our other great content and we'll see you in the next one.